All right, hey, hey, everybody, RV enthusiasts here. Nice seeing you again. If this is your first time to the channel, welcome to the channel. You may hear a little pitter patting around on my floor. That's my dog. He's old. He gets to do that. Um, so we're going to tackle the Tektro hydraulic brakes on the Magicycle today. We're going to replace the rotors, the hydraulic brakes uh, from the originals, which were the nut brand original brakes. These brakes are the first brakes that were put on the Magicycle. Since then, they've gone to the hydro to the uh, uh, Tektro mechanical brakes, and those work better. Um, so we're going to replace the nut brakes with the full-on hydraulic brakes and then we'll test it hopefully we'll get a chance to test that in this video I don't want to make it too long but we need to test that and make sure that those are breaking better I'm sure they will uh, but let's let's jump into this let me show you what we got first and uh, you know I like keeping my I'm old guy I like keeping my glasses there let's show you what we have this is, this is what came with the Tektro hydraulic brakes. We have the two rotors. We have 12 screws to reattach these rotors. And we have some, um, some pieces here that go into the caliper that holds on um, to the back wheel. Let me show you that real quick. Well, it's attached. Those will go somewhere on, well, right here, okay? That's what these little items are for here. So we have the back brake, the front brake, two rotors, 12 screws, and the uh, pieces to attach the back brake to the bike. They give you a set of instructions. Uh, we'll follow those. Those instructions say to use some Allen sets a T25 torque bit and that's all that it says. I know I'm going to need probably some needle nose pliers and probably some nippers to nip any ties that are holding the cables tight to the bike. And you'll also need some kind of gloves. Don't get powdered latex gloves. Okay so we're going to start this. The only thing these are really used for is when you're touching the rotors. So let's get started. All right, guys. So to begin with, I have a uh, helping hand to get my bike wheels off the ground. If you don't, you can put your handlebars on some kind of foam or blanket or something to protect anything that you have up on the handlebars and something on the back. Flip it over and you can work just as easy from uh, a seated position on the ground. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take the front wheel off the bike. Pretty simple. If you don't have a quick release with the skewer, use a, a, a socket set that fits it appropriately and, and unscrew both sides and the wheel should come off. In my case, I have the skewer. I don't have to undo it all. All I gotta do is loosen it. And the wheel should come off. It's that easy, folks that easy and I'm gonna show you on this one I, I probably won't show you how to take it apart on the rear wheel it will be exactly the same And you can hear these are on pretty tight. And you want to make sure, like that one didn't go all the way down into the hole. You want to make sure you get all the way down in there or you're going to have a, a stripping problem. And that's what I'm afraid of with two of these right here. That's already feeling a little bit loose. My tor it's, it's, it's not my Allen set for sure. That's kind of why I went in a star pattern to make sure that I kept even pressure and at this point, knowing that I have two of these that are, okay, so I took the other ones out. And what I did is I just came in here, pushed down on this and made sure I was firmly in and I broke them all loose. They all came loose without any problem. I was a little nervous, yes, because I could feel a little bit of stripping at the top of these heads. All right, so this rotor's off. 
Now we'll put the new rotor on with the new bolts. All right, guys, so from there, I'm gonna take the rotor and I'm gonna make sure that the arrow on the rotor is facing the direction that this wheel spins. So I'm gonna take and set it on. And now I'm just gonna lightly bolt the pattern down the way it's supposed to be. Now that this is on, you probably won't see me with gloves on here because I'm gonna put that on and I'll put the gloves back on when I need to touch this outer portion. Boy, on this uh, surface, I can't drop these black bolts uh, because I probably won't find them if they drop on a black uh, tile on my floor. When I'm all done with this, this gets uh, denatured alcohol on it anyway. And yes, you can use uh, like 99% rubbing alcohol or 90% rubbing alcohol. Um, I will probably use denatured alcohol, I think, because I have some. If I don't, I'll use rubbing alcohol as well. What we're trying to avoid is touching any of this with our, um, our fingers. You'll get that finger oil on there. And it'll be a tough road to get it off. All right, so I think I've got them located. And you just be careful, make sure they are going where you need them to go. Uh, because if you turn one of these in wrong, you're going to have some problems. Now I'll do this to the rear tire. I'll show you taking the rear tire off, but I won't show you doing this exact same thing. That's just repetitive. It makes the video go longer. It makes you guys, uh, <laughs> turn it off. You, you understand it. So the thing we're going to do is we're certainly going to go in the star pattern to get this, uh, uh, on once we get these near um, on the rotor. Right now, rotor's fairly loose. Okay, I think we've almost got them all seated, and we do. So now what we're gonna do, we're gonna star pattern around here until all these get tightened down. These are star bits. That's now it. we're gonna put the T's in. This is much nicer fit. And we're gonna go around in a pattern, and we're gonna do it a couple of times. And I don't know if you can see the actual movement or not, but I can certainly feel it. Okay. They all been going over once. Now we'll go over them a second time and make sure we get very little movement. Quarter inch driver. Just give it a little bit more snug. What I thought was about the amount that it took to took the, take the others off. Little here. And yes, I can feel them moving here. And I'm gonna do the last one here. Okay, now I'm gonna go back over them one more time. Now, the, the T25 head is a much better head to me than the Allen head. Uh, just feels right. Nice grip on them, you know? And I would suggest, after you ride it a little bit, say you, you do a trip on it, just come back and check these one more time. That's all you need to do. All right, guys, now we're gonna take off the caliper and just pay attention that this is the long one, this is the short one here. Break that loose, come over here. Break that one loose. And once these are out, I'll take this off. like so, and we'll nip that off right at the end of the head. And we'll, all right, so we take our nippers, we bring it up to the head, and trying to protect my fingers, catch that head, <laughs> and uh, not drop the caliper. There we go, that's off. Now this will slide out and we're free. The caliper is off.
Okay, so the adapter did come with the new brake. It's on the brake as we speak on the caliper. So I'm gonna take this off and I'm gonna put the wheel back on and then I can set this down to work on the upper portion on the front brakes. Slide it in all the way up onto the, uh, in the seating position. And there we go, clamped in. All right, now we'll take it down off the hand, off the helping hand, and we will uh, take the rest of the upper brake off. I am gonna try one quick thing, uh, just to see if I've got it correct. I'm gonna spin the wheel, but be careful that it doesn't flop over on you. And then I'm gonna put plastic near it. And I'm as close as I can get right there, and it's, I mean, you can hear it a little bit as I touch it, but I am so close to it, it's perfectly straight. I don't have any alignment tool, but the way I did this made sure it went on straight. That is straight. And uh, I didn't want to use anything that would uh, damage or mar. It's also a simple way to uh, test your tire. See how true your tire is. That's pretty good, or your rim. Pretty good. All right, let's take it down off the hand. I don't have a front brake, all I have is a back brake right now. I move it away from the hand, pull it out, I've got my hand on the back brake, and I'm just going to let it down easy. Then I'm going to move this over. So what I've done is I've moved the bike over to um, a yellow tile for me. So if I drop something, anything that's dark will show up on the yellow tile real easy. Alright, so the next thing we're going to do is we got to take this brake off, this front brake. Uh, we need to take it off and uh, replace it with the hydraulic brake. So it looks like I can just pull this up through here, uh, the little catch here. Then it does get tied up with uh, these little uh, cable management things right here. Not a big deal. Uh, I will take these off, hopefully. So on this bike, we've got cable management in these little curly Q plastic. So you get down, and we're going to take that off. Now that's off. Save that because you'll need it. And so now the cable itself is free. And all we have to do is come up to Juliet plug. Make sure I'm getting close enough to you guys. I hate for you to miss out on an important piece. <laughs> you go, Bruce, I didn't see it. Okay, so we're gonna follow this cable. We've got that cable off. We're gonna come to this cable and we're just gonna pull straight out. Just straight out and disconnect. It's already started to come. Just disconnect that Juliet plug. Now I'm gonna reroute this a little bit to there. I like it a little bit better there than I did tucked around, I think. So here we go, we've got the Juliet plug off, we have this off, and now our handle's free to come off. So we're going to disconnect right here and try to take this off right here. Feels like a five again. See if my guess is correct. I need to get something to sit down on because I ain't about to bend over and look at it. It's not my style, people. Okay. So yes, it's a five as well. And we are going to take it off. And hopefully I don't have to take this off as well. If I have to take this off, I'm probably going to replace it, which I don't have in my arsenal of stuff. Yeah, so it's ready to come off. I have to take this off. So let's take that off. So this is a muscle job. It's a muscle job, and if I had my children here who have much better hand grip strength than me, I would have them take it off. Uh, I've already turned it a little bit. 
It's just two hands turn and pull as you twist. And it's probably going to take 10 minutes. My children would have it off in two. All right, guys. To save you some headache, a couple of things. After fooling with my grip strength and everything for a while, I just put on some of these gloves. They're nice grippy gloves with a little bit of grip to them. And I've been able to whittle this off a little bit here. So I'm bracing the bike with my body and pulling outward. She's gonna come in a minute. Maybe heat would help too. All right, we're close. Oh, my suggestion is get lockable grips. Don't replace these. So I'll probably complete this job with the exception of putting the hand grip back on and I'm gonna get lockable grips. And remember, I still gotta get the other side off. It's hard to pull. The simpler way would be to um, get a, a knife and, and slice it off and just peel it off that way would be real easy. As long as you have replacement grips, that would be my recommendation. All right, and at this point, guys, we just slide this off. Now I'm gonna check on this bell, see if I can put this bell back on. All right, there is no way to replace the bell. So now we're just gonna put this grip back on. Slide it up here. Figure out kind of where you're gonna want it. I'm thinking about right there for me. And then just tighten it back up. This now requires a four millimeter wrench. I think I like about where it's gonna be. Okay, so now we got two other things that I have to think about with this bike. Uh, making sure that I've got my direct connection to where I want it to be. And that's how it goes right there. Snaps all in, that's perfect. And now I can put my little cable or cable management thing right here. like that and I even incorporated my tail uh, camera into that little strip. Uh, I'm going to put it back on the helping hand to get it up at a level I can see everything that I'm doing. So let's go over there. All right, so most of the stuff I have here uh, you can buy online. Like my helping hand was only, I don't know, 80 bucks or 60 bucks or something. You don't need all of this. So now in order to put these brakes on, I probably should loosen that to give me a little more play in this line. So now we're going to bring this up to here and put it and install it right like so. In order to do that, they ship with a spacer. So now we take the spacer out. Now if you pull that trigger, these would come together and you can get them out. It's just a nightmare. So it's better not to do it. So these are important not to um, not to strip out, <laughs> as with any bolt, actually. So I'm making absolutely sure that they're they're started, right? So that's starting. Okay, I can feel they're started. Okay, so 
they're on, it, run, it, it cycles. Now what we have are two things. I have a slight rub. I'm not worried about that rub because I can get rid of that real easy. But now I'm just gonna give a quick test and then we'll get rid of the rub. Okay, the brake works, <laughs> so that's a good thing. Let's get rid of that rub now. So the way we get rid of the rub and we align. So what happens with brakes, and, and you see hear a lot of squeaking on a lot of brakes and stuff like that. What we need to do is we need to get that brake pad absolutely aligned true, parallel to the rotor. If we don't get it parallel, you're gonna have vibration in the pad and it's gonna, it's gonna give you that squeaky sound. Now, what we're gonna do, we're gonna loosen this. Here, let's turn it sideways. We're gonna loosen this enough that there's play here. And it doesn't take a lot. You don't have to, you know, there's play there. There's play there, because I got, I got enough of it loose. There's play, okay? So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna squeeze and hold the trigger and tighten those two bolts. You can use two people to do this, or you can find something to squeeze the trigger and tighten the bolt. Um, and then after I do that, I'm gonna clean the, uh, the rotor and we'll call the front one complete. Hand grip is squeezed. And now I'm gonna tighten these back. And by doing this, you're aligning that pad or the, the pads on front and back with that rotor. There we go. And that will help you with a squeak if it's being caused by that. All right, now we're gonna clean that. There's probably a little more adjustment I need to do after I uh, kind of bed the, the brakes in, but that's a whole different thing. So now I have some uh, alcohol. I could not find my denatured alcohol, so I'm using uh, high-grade <laughs> rubbing alcohol on a microcloth. This, we're gonna come here and we're gonna rotate this and just keep wiping it down with the microcloth. And we'll do the inside. Now, I'm pretty sure I didn't touch a whole lot of it. Uh, the video will show that. <laughs> but just in case I did, it's always good to just rub where that caliper or that brake pad's gonna be. All right, that'll do it. Front brake is done other than putting a new hand grip on because I'm not gonna put that back. I could put that back on. I'll show you, I'll put it back on. I'll use alcohol to shove it on. That'll make it a lot slicker to move. So we'll rotate that. Sounds good. We'll break. All right, now we'll, uh, we'll take it down off of here and move on to the next part of the project. All right, guys, so we're going to work on to the back tire here. We're going to take the back tire off and we will change out the rotor. Oh man, that wasn't even that tight. I'm going to take both caps off on both uh, both sides of the back tire. Other side's longer. It's not. I'm just slower at my left hand. <laughs> uh, then we're going to take the washer off. Then we're going to take this out too. And do the same on the other side. Uh, three or four millimeter. I guess four. Let's see. Four. So what this one is, this is a retaining clip to keep this from turning. Keeps it in, in its uh, proper space. So I still have to disconnect the motor and uh, the caliper before I take it off. This side looks just like that side, guys. I'm not trying to hide something fancy on you. Pretty simple.
you can't find a bag of tools, you go with what you got in your thing. This looks like one of the smaller ones I have. You know what? It might be easier to take the tire off. Then I've got room to play. I think I'm going to try that. So in order to take the tire off, I got to take and cut this. Tie strap. So growing up, I worked, growing up, I was a teenager, I worked for the company that was the original maker of these things. They had the original patent. Try to look it up. It's called Panduit out of Tinley Park, Illinois. And uh, they, they were the originators of this. Man, we used to make these things like crazy. And then I ins was an inspector and inspected them to make sure they were proper. That was an easier job. Uh, work midnight, it was great fun. Uh, but, you know, such as life as a child or a young guy. All right, now we gotta take the, the motor uh, connection off. I think I'm gonna take this one off too, just so I got plenty of these ties. I even got color ties too. I don't know, I might put a color tie on there. Oh, that came off nice and easy. That was great. Okay, so that's off. This is off, that, that's free, it's not in anything's way. Now I should be able to take this back tire off. Uh, give me a little slack there. See if we can break it loose here. Yeah, that helped. So guys, you can take, you can thank uh, Tinkering Turtle for that little bit of help. Uh, that was a, that, that really helps take that out. Very nice little trick. All right, now we gotta uh, replace this rotor. Let's do that. Okay, so the wheel's off. I changed out the rotor. You didn't need to see that twice. It's exactly the same way I did it the first time. Now with the wheel off, man, that's still going to be a pain. This one isn't. This one will make it, I think. Yeah. This one I'm going to have to take off slowly. Oh, by the way, the, the, the nuts or the screws that go on the rotors, they do have blue Loctite on them. Man, these back ones are tough. But we about got her. Okay. I need to take this loose, which means cut this, and loosen this. All right, got that out. So the tricky part on the MagiCycle, getting this thicker cable back through that uh, front tube because they're all inside the tube. So I don't wanna go and mess with all them, them uh, wires because you, you mess with something, you hit it wrong, you know, you, you can do a, maybe another choice. So I gotta think about this for a minute, guys. And I'm wondering even if I should take my uh, splash guard off a minute. I don't think that I need to. Yeah, they're tied, they're wire tied up under there too. So I'm gonna take this. Well, all I have to do is undo these, that's okay. And remind me to, uh, to put these back before I flip the bike back over. <laughs> so all I did was cut my splash guard off. You may not have the splash guard. If you don't have the splash guard, you don't have to worry about it, but there is certainly another wire tie holding all these wires together right here. Neat. 
careful. Just nip the head off, that's good. Oh yeah. I like what I see there. That noise means there's room. That means there's a little bit of uh, space around this wire. So I gotta find out which makes it that cable right there. See, see the cable? That's the one I gotta pull through. All right, here's the trick, guys. All right, so the trick to get this cable through, I don't really care about this cable here. I can either pull it through manually or I can cut it off. I'm not gonna use it again. So I'm just gonna cut it off. So the next thing you wanna do is get some good tape. Really good Gorilla tape. And the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut me a clean line right there. The reason I want a clean line is I don't want any frayed uh, fabric as I'm pulling it through to get caught in there and peel the tape off and then I've lost my, my uh, fish line in there and really struggle to have to get it out. If that happens, this turns into a lot harder video. So here's how we're gonna do it, guys. We're gonna mid-tape that. That's gonna go midway. And push it down, kind of with your finger. Then we're gonna take the new cable, or the new, uh, yeah, the new brake cable that's filled with uh, mineral oil, and we're gonna tape it right to it, just like so. So it's taped well. Now I'm gonna wrap this tape, and I'm not trying to make a big old blunt. I'm just trying to get very similar to what I have in terms of how thick this cable is. I don't want it to be real thick, because that will get bound up in there, and that'll be a nightmare. Okay, and like I said, I'm not gonna use all that tape. I didn't say it, but I'm not gonna use all this tape. I'm gonna cut some of this off because I've already got it around it. That's all I need. Okay, so what we wanna make sure of, we're not gonna just yank it through like a wild man. This is gonna take a little bit of time maybe, maybe not. But uh, we want to try to get it from here to there and get that white piece out. Um, I'm going to put something here so other than my hand. Let's see. Hopefully you can see. So now we're just going to feed this through the tube. Fingers crossed, man. I'm going to bring you to the other side so you can see where we're coming out. And there it is, guys. Success. All right, I'm going to leave that like that for now. Now we can finish this job up and then move up to the top and, flip, you know, flip the bike over and move up to the top. Oh, that was my fear right there. That, that was, that's where all my, um, what do you call it, nervousness was. That's it, right there. Now I need to bring this back. I need to tie these down, but I, I'm not going to cinch them. I'm just going to get some wire ties and tie them back up, and then we'll work from there. Okay, 
Okay. It's back in. We're fully seated down here. This is an 18 millimeter, by the way. Also guys, <laughs> while you're doing this, um, I did it initially, I didn't say anything about it. Take your, take your battery out and charge it while uh, you're doing it. My battery's been charged a while now. Uh, just not done with this yet, but battery's charged. Straight, straight, plug in. If I would have worn those gloves this whole time, ooh, my hands would be so hot. And again, all these have uh, blue stuff on them to blue Loctite. It's, it's such a crappy day outside. I, I leave my tie straps in the barn. So I gotta go to the barn and get them and oh, it's awful out there. assembled we're gonna have to do an adjustment here to get that to go away but we're, we're close just like we did on the front you know the funny part is you guys see this and you're gonna see a nice clean video but I still got to clean up the mess guys if I don't clean up the mess the boss gets mad all right, I think we can turn it over now and work from the top side. All right, guys, we are now on the top half of the job. All right, so we got to cut some more ties off over here. Because they bundled all the wire. This zip tie, it's easiest if you just cut the head off the zip tie. That way you don't risk. Damaging wire, cut the head off. The wire stay in place. I thought these little, uh, these little uh, circular spiral things weren't all that great. That maybe they should have done the whole bike in them. 
I'm not thinking that anymore. Get the grommet close to where it needs to go. It's interesting to see how this all goes together. Careful not to cut your new, new line. Uh, don't cut it, peel it apart. Although there's a metal piece at the end, you do take a risk of cutting through and you've done it all for nothing. Now the hard part. Half an inch. Inch and three quarter. Boy. Whoever thought of lock on grips deserves a medal. I'm not even kidding, my forearms are burning. All right, so what we got left, and it's going to be hard because this is a little shorter than I hoped for, and I'm just going to have to put it in real fast because otherwise I'm going to lose fluid. Anyway, you have this piece here, goes on. Then this piece goes on, and this actually allows you to screw in like that. So that's on. And then this one, I think the little side goes out. Like so. Yeah, because that's uh that's tapered on the end, so when you put it together, it will it will do what it needs to do. So I'm a little nervous about this part, guys. Hey, I can be less nervous. I can lean it on me. Now that we're done with that, I have a little bit of oil on my hands. I need to get that off before I do my, my rotor uh, cleaning. All right, a little alcohol, and we'll clean that right off. And I think all we have left, guys, is cleaning the rotors, and we're, we're set. All right, guys, I had a small mistake. I want to make sure you guys see it.
So the last piece, what I forgot to do is take the little uh, Allen set, it's a one millimeter Allen set that's in this line. I forgot to take it out. <laughs> and the last piece that looks like it goes properly the way I put it, the, the ferrule actually is reversed, which I don't quite understand. Um, Yeah, see that little bitty sucker? Yeah, caused me problems. All right, I gotta put the grips back on, but I wanna delay that for a little bit. I don't know if I'm gonna go with what I currently have or lockables. All right, I've gotta clean the rotor, probably fill with, fill with fluid and it's done. All right. We're gonna clean the rotors or the rotor, the rear one. Those front ones are really tight. The back ones I don't have done yet. The last thing we need to do is align the brake. So the same as last time on the other side, or on the fronts. Okay, and I said these were fairly loose, and they are. They're not crazy tight. Ugh. So even though the back ones were really no harder and should have, because they were the second ones I did, should have gone faster. For me, unfortunately, there, I've got the brake tight, these are loose, now I'm gonna tighten them back up. This is aligning the rotor to the pads. It should have gone faster. Um, it did not for me. I uh, don't know why. Uh, you know, feeding the line through the tube, uh, a little more work on the top end than the other ones. And that's really about it. Still holding the brake. Okay, now I'm going to release the brake. And that should have line those, that rotor to those brakes. Replace or charge my battery while I was waiting. While I was doing this, my battery was pretty low. From a mechanical standpoint, everything's done. Now what I want to do is just make sure everything still functions. The real question is this here, does the throttle work? Throttle works. Okay, and headlight work? Headlight works. Display works. All right, so this project probably will take half a day. I would say four hours. The front really literally took me an hour and a half. 
Uh, and uh, the, the record time was 53 minutes because I stopped in between to do other things, but I had 53 minutes of recording. I don't know how much recording I have here. I'm sure it is a lot. Uh, so there will be a lot of editing on the back side of this one, but it was a little harder on the back one. Um, just pay attention to what you're doing. It's uh, on a one to 10 in my brain, it's a six, but to some people it's probably gonna be harder than that. It just takes a little bit of time. Take your time and uh, yeah, just take your time, half a day's work. Watch my video, it's probably longer. All right guys, hey, thanks for joining me. And we'll catch you in the next episode. All right, guys, I'm going to cheap out. <laughs> uh, I decided I don't want to spend money. Got money to spend. Just don't want to do it. I don't know that it's worth it to me. Uh, being that I got, I'm going to have a lot of bikes to be doing, guys. So a little alcohol in this. Shake it up a little bit. Alcohol's back on my hand, and then just shove it on. Very easy, nothing to it. Then the end piece and end cap goes on, done. The bike is done. See, now all I gotta do is ride it and see how well it rides. Pretty excited about that too. So I'm just making sure I want the, you know, cause the, the, that out, once that alcohol burns off, these will retack to where They'll be difficult to move. But I think that's about where I like them. About right there. All right. That's all, all that's the only extra, guys. Everything else on the bike's done except for a ride.